All right. Oregon 35, Ohio State 28. What in the world happened? Oregon playing a 9 a.m. body clock game. I didn't bet this one I, because I did not have a good feel one way or another. But Kayvon Thibodeau out for the game. Justin Flo out for the game. It, they're two. I did guess. Did not matter. It didn't matter. Didn't matter at all. Oregon. Hey, scoring hey Gary. It. Yeah. Gary. Yeah. CJ Stroud, not good at football. Oh, he's really not, is he? He's Why, really listen, I watched almost every second of this football game. And let me tell you what I saw. I saw guys wide ass open for Ohio State. The, the, you were right. Oregon's DBs could not hang with them. Yeah. I saw passes that were thrown, not overthrows, not underthrow. They were seven, eight yards away from where a receiver is, standing by themselves. Yes. This kid has to learn some accuracy or or he's going to get the hook. When is Ryan Day going to give him the hook? It was funny. We have a mutual friend that we were talking trash about bad teams this week, and he he did not mention Ohio State. And I said, I, I, Ohio State could be a bad football team. And he started making a bunch of excuses for him. And he, one of the things he said was, I think, I think this was a look ahead spot. And I was like that, that like big upcoming tilt against Tulsa that they've got next weekend, a look ahead like, spot, like what, like what? And then he was like, well, you know, this is a noon game and it's hard to get fired up for a noon game. And I was like, if you think it's hard for an East coast team to get fired up for a noon game, how hard is it for a team that plays on the Pacific fucking ocean? What are we talking about? I will I will tell you this. All right, so so Parker that I do the Bet US show with, he's got uh, this thing called Echo Rate, right? And I, let me let me pull it. Ah, he doesn't have it up yet. Crap. But all right, so I, I, I what I'm curious about, I noticed in this game because I was actually even though I was headed to Tuscaloosa, uh, the people that I was riding with have a television in the car with Wi-Fi. I didn't have, I didn't know this was a thing, so I was able to watch football all day yesterday other than when i was at the stadium it was kind of kind of nice ohio state held the football for like the first 10 minutes out of 12 minutes in this game mm-hmm. and and had success had 100 yards like were actually it, they had know, success but they never got in the end zone exactly so points, they never led in this game at all points per opportunity ohio state had nine scoring opportunities put up 28 <laughs> points that's 3.11 per scoring opportunity oregon had six and scored 28 that's 4.67 per scoring opportunity. Oregon took advantage of of their situations and Ohio State did not. They So let me let me tell you let me tell you what I saw happen in this game. Those DBs realized they couldn't cover the wide receivers. So I think they just tried to hang with them. They realized somebody on that defensive side of the ball, I don't know if it's DC, I don't know if it was Mario, somebody on the defensive side of the ball and said He's not hitting the receiver. So stay in the area of the receiver because if he's not going to hit the receiver, he might throw it to you. And I'll be damned if at the end of the game, the fourth quarter of the game, he's just started throwing it to the Ducks. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and I'm also tell you this. I, I gave him as much shit as, as somebody has ever given a coach when he was the coach at Mississippi State. But Joe Moorhead coached his life off last night. Yes, he, he did. Or yesterday afternoon. He called the the game of his career in a, in a hot. See, it's funny. I valued home field advantage at Arkansas, at places like Tennessee, at BYU against Utah, at, at, at Mississippi State. I did not value it at Columbus. And you would think that doesn't make any sense. They've got 100,000 people there and Starkville has 64. That's because Why? Ohio State expected to win. Like that's because Ohio State fans are you eighty percent of the people that are in that stadium have never seen them lose. They've yeah. never seen them bad. They've just seen them win their entire life because they're nineteen years old, and that's it. Mississippi State fans have never seen their team be great except for one season where they were really good, and and that even ended up badly at the end. Yeah. And so, so they have this hope, they have this desire, they have this fire that teams that win all the time aren't going to get. Arkansas fans have been though, not fans, Arkansas has been the worst team in the West for the last seven years, yes. maybe longer. And, and so their teams come out these big home games opening season, didn't have any fans last year. They have a fire and a passion that, that Ohio State's just not going to get. Alabama's not going to get it. Clemson's not going to get it. If you're used to winning all the time, you're never going to get You can't manufacture it. You can't fake it. I don't think you're wrong there. 
I don't think you're wrong at all. I think Ohio State has got some some soul searching to do. They have got the team is talented. Listen, yes. the defense sucks. I think the defense is bad. All right, not not just not just because I don't think Minnesota's offense is very good. Minnesota moved the ball on them kind of at will. All right, but I think Oregon's offense is really good. So them looking bad against Oregon doesn't. He, I think the defense is not good. I don't think CJ Stroud's accurate. I think this kid is athletic. I think he is a crazy good football player. He he needs to find something other than quarterback. Yes. Uh, cumulative PPA, by the way, Anthony Brown, 17.1 for the game. Really, really good. Like, he he was... Oh, Oregon's offense. Oregon's offense yeah. was clicking, baby. CJ Verdell, hey, I'm telling you this, I, I still think Ohio State has one of the most talented defensive lines in the country, but they are inexperienced, man. They are so young, and they don't know what they're doing yet. In, well, uh, hey, Oregon we're going we to talk about a, guy, a lot of guys with talent that aren't any good, okay? Oh, yeah. Because that, that's, that's my team, by the way. A lot of talent and not any good. Hang on. You talk about CJ Verdell. So, so on the SBR show, I do I do a, a winners, a losers, a bad beat of the week, and then I do a uh, like I rip this off from from our boy Wetzel yeah. and, and Forty and those guys. One game Heisman, and and it's all going to running backs. One of the running backs is Vardell. You, you're talking had had the game of his life. Yes, in Columbus. Yes, I mean, good gracious, twenty carries, one hundred sixty one yards. Uh, had a 77-yard touchdown run, two touchdowns on the day. And Anthony Brown, look, 17 out of 35, 236 yards, two touchdowns. He was serviceable, man. He he, it was, Beyond serviceable, he actually made What's plays. I, I, was gonna say, made plays. I didn't think he was just serviceable. I thought he was good. Now, like I said, some of that, we were worried about Oregon's defense. We we should have been worried about the other defense. Uh, yes. No, you're, you're not wrong about that. You are not wrong at all. It does make me believe that that, that Fresno State, Situation the week before with Oregon, like I, I kind of nailed total that look one. ahead. Yes. That that McKinney is a look ahead spot. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B Giannini at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.